Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today, we are on Lesson 28, and we're going to learn all about Prop GLM. Now, if you have learned Prop GLM in your classes or you're interested in how you can perform a regression analysis or an ANOVA analysis using one procedure, this lesson will be for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So our agenda for today, we're going to go over what exactly the Prop GLM procedure is. We're going to perform a regression analysis using Prop GLM as well as an ANOVA analysis. All right, so let's define this procedure. So GLM stands for Generalized Linear Model. So it's a group of models. These models are either regression models or statistical tests such as ANOVA or T-tests. Procedures that focus on just regression, if you want to do an ordinary least squares regression, may be more efficient than Prop GLM. So if you're trying to do, for instance, a linear regression to predict price, you may want to just use the PROC REG procedure because this procedure is more efficient. And we're going to see that in the syntax later on. Prop GLM is also great when you have imbalanced data and you want to run an ANOVA. So say, for instance, you have three categories, the North Store, the South Store, and the West Store, and each one of those have a different amount of observations. You may have 33 observations from the store in the North, 40 observations from the store in the South, and 50 observations from the store in the West. So Prop GLM can handle imbalanced data well if you want to run an ANOVA versus just using a regular PROC ANOVA, okay? All right, so some statements. So there is tons of statements, as you can see for the visual on the right-hand side, that you can utilize in Prop GLM. The most important statements that we're going to focus on is going to be the class statement and the model statement. So remember, the class statement is going to list our categorical variables, and the model statement is going to have the Y variable or the dependent variable on the left, which are independent variables on the right hand side, right? So if you're running a regression using Prop GLM, the model statement is the only required statement, okay? If you're trying to do an ANOVA, since an ANOVA is analysis of variance amongst two or more groups, and those groups are considered categorical variables, you need the class statement that lists out those categorical variables as well as the model statement. There are tons of other statements available for you. So if you wanted to do multivariate analysis, you could. If you want to get some confidence intervals and get least squared means, you can as well. If you wanted to design a certain experiment using the contrast or estimate statements, you can do that also. So some options available to us in Proc GLM, these are all of the options, okay? So you can specify your alpha level. As I mentioned, if you want to conduct, for instance, a MANOVA test, which is going to be multivariate analysis, it's going to have two dependent variables and one independent variable, if you want to have certain plots, if you want to output the data set, if you want to order it a certain way, all of these are options that are available to you. Okay, so now since we know what Prop GLM is, is those generalized linear models, we can do regression and we can do statistical tests. Let's go ahead and talk about the regression, okay? So I have ran a regression analysis using two different procedures. So the prop GLM procedure, I'm using the model statement and I'm going to try to predict miles per gallon in the city towards these continuous variables. Because remember for regression analysis, you need continuous numeric variables. So I'm doing cylinders, horsepower, and miles per gallon. And these are the coefficients that I get out in my estimate column. And this is my p-value, okay? So notice that I did the same procedure using PROC REG with the same model, and I got out the same estimates as well as the same p-values. But which one should you use? So for a regression analysis, I highly recommend using PROC REG. Not only is it more efficient, but it also gives you some nice plots. And we're going to see those plots when we move into SAS Studio. So this is how you do a regression analysis in PROC GLM. 
your Y variable is going to be on the left and all of your independent variables or your features on the right. Okay, so let's look at how to do a two-way ANOVA. So keep in mind, a two-way ANOVA is when we have one continuous dependent variable known as the Y, and we have two independent categorical variables. And we're trying to test the interaction between each of the variables as well as each single variable separately. And if you want to learn more about two-way ANOVA, I'm going to link it in the description below. So in this case, I'm still using that CARS data set. My categorical variables are drivetrain and type. So drivetrain is like front, rear, all sides. Type is going to be like SUV and sedan. I'm going to model the miles per gallon in the city still, but in this time, I'm using my categorical variables. So I'm using drivetrain and type as well as the interaction between the two. I'm running the same procedure in Procanova and notice that I get different F statistics, okay? They have different significance as well. So we can see that in the Proc GLM, since this number is less than 0.05, it's saying that the interaction between these two categorical variables is significant. But in Proc ANOVA, it's saying that the interaction between these two variables is not significant. Because this data set is imbalanced, meaning I don't have the same observation for every type, so I don't have 50 sedans, 50 all-wheel all drives, 50 front-end drives, it's not equal. Your go-to is going to be using Proc GLM when you have an imbalanced data set, okay? So this is going to be the one that we're going to want to utilize. So use Proc Reg if you're doing a regression analysis. Use Proc GLM if you're doing an imbalanced two-way ANOVA or single ANOVA. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into SAS Studio. And so we see here that I have done my PROC REG and my PROC GLM. So in this case, I'm using the sashelp.car. So if you go over to the left-hand side, once again, you'll most likely have this server in files and folders. Expand it, you wanna expand libraries, go to my libraries, the SAS help libraries, and then we can expand that cars data set and it's going to tell you the variables as well as the variable type. So if it has an A next to it, it's a categorical variable. If it has numbers next to it, it's a numeric variable, okay? So in this case, I'm trying to predict miles per gallon in the city using three continuous numeric variables, which is cylinders, well, discrete new, um, numeric for cylinders, horsepower and miles per gallon highway, and I'm gonna run a proc reg too. So I'm gonna run both of these in my results. The first one that's gonna show up is the GLM procedure. And notice that I get a T value, I get P value. So it's telling me that horsepower and miles per gallon highway are significant, okay? And when I go to the reg procedure, it's telling me the same thing, that horsepower and miles per gallon is significant, and it's also giving me the same coefficients or param parameter estimates. But notice that the reg procedure also gives me a lot of these nice little visuals, right? Where I can check normality, right? Um, see if there's any skew. I can also look at the residuals to see if there's equal variance. So proc reg gives me a lot of great information. Now you can turn some of these plots on for GLM. But why would you when you can just use PROC REG, okay? So they give us the same parameter estimates, the same p-values, but PROC REG gives us those nice graphs that we like. Okay, so now I'm running PROC GLM again, and I'm going to put my two categorical variables in the class statement. I'm going to have the model statement with those two categorical variables in the interaction between the two because I'm running a two-way ANOVA. If I wanted to run a one-way ANOVA, I would just have one categorical variable. So let's go ahead and run these two. Notice my log is going to say, warning, PROC ANOVA has determined that the number of observations in each cell is not equal. PROC GLM may be more appropriate, right? So when I see this yellow come up, that means that I have a warning. So it's telling me I have imbalanced data, use PROC GLM. So in my results, I get my PROC GLM. And for PROC GLM, it does give me a nice little interaction plot, okay, where I'm able to get my F statistic this time instead of a T statistic 
as well as my p-value to see if any of this is significant, okay? So that is how I would run. Um, that is all about Proc GLM. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Learning with Jelly. And if there's a topic that you would like to see in SAS or in Python or in SQL, please, please, please drop it in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.